In this video, I want to address a couple of things. The first is going to be this area here, this clean spot in the patina. It's being uh, created by some combination of our inputs. Uh, and I don't really understand why it's happening, but I don't like it. I want there to be a nice consistent coverage uh, on this entire material here of this dirt. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and uh, it's probably not powder coat, so I'm going to collapse that. It's probably base metal. Just confirm, yes. And then it's probably dirt, so we can take a look at that. Yes, okay, great. And there's only one thing inside dirt, so it's certainly that, but we can confirm. Okay, so that's a good way that you can, if you've got your stuff named properly, you can figure out exactly where in your layer stack your offending component is. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the mask rendering here by holding Alt and clicking on the mask. And then I'm going to select the mask. And we have all of these different things here in this generator that are combining together to create this as the final result. So I'm not really sure which of these components is going to have an impact, if any. I suspect something will. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and play with all of them. And I can tell for a fact right out of the gate it is not global blur. We can look at balance. No, that's not really working. So we'll set that back to zero with control Z or 0.5, whatever the default value is. We can look at contrast. That is not it. So we have texture opacity. Oh, that's not really working. Nope. Ambient occlusion. Nope. Curvature. Nope. And then world space. Oh, that's kind of doing it. That's kind of what we're looking for. So we can leave a little bit of world space. We can look at position. That seems like it's having a positive impact as well. And thickness. So they are, the, the lighter areas are definitely getting lighter, but it's filling in those uh, those completely black areas where it was just clean metal underneath. So if we tap the M key to see what it looks like now. That's a lot better. I can definitely, I can definitely live with that. And there may be, you know, some reason to come in later and punch it back along these edges if we want. It's not it's a, a very difficult thing, but this is already looking a lot better in that area there. So, and kind of a bigger picture, there's a lot of stuff in here that isn't uh, immediately intuitive as to what it is doing and how it may be combining with everything else to give you a result, but there aren't really that many things. So you can always just go in and play with them and see what happens. So while we're here, I will briefly talk about a couple of these things, specifically the world space normal. So if you open it up, we have uh, some controls here that are pretty useful. So imagine if this was a windowsill and you wanted it to have crap on the right side and not crap on the left side, like the outside versus the inside or something. You can actually apply textures uh, in world space from right to left. Now you can also do the same thing here, top to bottom. So this is this is useful where it's uh, uh, you might want to have like snow or something. And in fact, I can see that cleans it up here. I'm going to hop over to my my mask here so I can see what's going on. So that was uh, top to bottom. So you can see right now it's focusing stuff on the top and I guess the bottom is kind of dark. And if I swing this the other direction, well, the bottom doesn't really change that much, but the top definitely does. So anyway, it's not, I think because there's so much other stuff happening here, it's not entirely clear, but uh, this is a way that you can control. And then we have front to back as well. And front to back is kind of arbitrary, like depending on what direction your thing is pointed, front to back and right to left could kind of be interchangeable. You know, if it's pointed down the z-axis versus the x-axis. Uh, I think because the symmetry understands what's going on properly, that it's probably right to left is the appropriate thing here. But anyway, it's just a thing to be aware of. So that's just one little thing inside here, the world space normal. Uh, curvature, this is where we can say like I want there to be you know, more or less stuff on the edges. That might not be such a bad idea. You can come in here and play with that a little bit. You can see big and, and huge, and it's sort of looking at how tight is the corner, and depending on how tight it is, we're going to be applying this much. Either if it's a sharp corner, we want a ton of curvature to be showing up in our mask. If it's a medium corner, we're going to be kind of in the middle, and if it's like a big round thing, like say this or whatever, that's probably that's probably what we're talking to when we're playing with huge like you can see it lightning I mean everything obviously is getting lighter there but okay so those two things very useful uh, curvature and world space normal for dialing in 
uh, whatever your wear and tear is. So the other thing that I want to do in the rest of this video is I want to talk about how to get this nice weld pattern here. So to do that, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call it welds. And we're going to turn everything except the height map off or the height, the height layer, whatever. So with the layer selected, I'm going to go over and just give it some value in the height map. And if I give it a black mask and then I go to the brushes and I grab the basic card, I'm going to turn symmetry off and I just start painting. You can see what's happening here is where I paint white into the mask, I get the impression that there is height there and you can you can on the fly change it to a positive height or negative height and it doesn't necessarily like we're not jumping off the page here because it is just in the normal map but it's still a pretty useful feature so what we're going to do is we'll just leave it at whatever we can we can play with that kind of once we once we get our brush figured out but now i've got my uh, my black mask selected i've got my basic hard brush selected so i've got the options for it over here in my properties window and the first thing I want to do is I need to add a little bit of separation between every time the stroke is applied. So I'm going to go to spacing and you can sort of see what the result is ultimately going to look like. And if I come over here, probably my brush size needs to get a little bit smaller. And the reason we're seeing this gray circle on the outside is because I've got this lazy mouse turned on. So that's what happens with a little bit of distance, but we're still missing kind of um, like a, the layering effect there. So if we come over to stroke opacity and reduce that down, that didn't seem to do it. Let's try flow, put opacity back up. There we go. So if I reduce the flow, I'm starting to get a little bit of what I'm looking for, but it's still not quite right. So in my masks, uh, alphas, sorry, I may be able to find something like, oh, I don't know, maybe this one, and I can just click it and drag it. And you can see what it's going to look like let me get the angle pointing in the right direction. Again, if you look up here, you can get a sense for what the what the behavior is going to be. I don't know. I'm having trouble dialing that one in. But it's very, very similar. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And that's going to be control and middle mouse wheel if you're on a PC. So it's the exact same thing over and over again, which is it looks really procedural. So rather than going through this giant list of useful but not specifically what I'm looking for alphas here I mean this one might work I'll try that but I have something else in mind that I'm kind of interested in showing you let's get the angle pointing in the right direction That's all right. And you can actually, if you just turn follow path on, it will it will change the orientation so that you get what you're looking for. And that's kind of getting there. You know, maybe if you played with the height or something. But it's not exactly what I'm looking for. So rather than, like I said, poking around in here and trying to find the perfect thing, it's pretty easy to simply make your own in Photoshop. So this is a square. Uh, it's 512 by 512. That's kind of arbitrary, but that's probably about as much as you're going to need. This is going to be a fairly small feature. And then the first layer is a circle that I blurred, white circle. And then I made another circle that is black that just overlays the top of it. So I get a nice you know, fade out here. And then you just need to save it as a JPEG. Blah, blah, blah. Already saved. Uh, let me scoot this up so pretend this is all happening. And then... Uh, we hop over to Painter and go File, Import Resources. We'll add the resource. Going to import it into Project 35. Oh, I, I need to set the what it is. So it puts in the right menu. And there we can see it looks like we've already got one in from a previous test. But now I can just hop over to this and we can just take a look at what the result is. So I think my spacing might be a little bit too much on that. That's looking better. So pretty good so far. We can add a little bit of variation if we throw a little bit of size jitter in there. Maybe a little flow. 
a little position, just a little tiny bit here. I think that might be the position is maybe just punching it out a little bit. I mean, I don't hate it. Um, I just think it needs to be you know, a little bit less. Okay, there we go. So uh, that is hopefully a quick and easy crash course on how you can make your own cool weld brushes by simply creating an alpha and then playing with a few of these uh, these settings here for the jitter settings. Uh, and I will include this alpha in the resource file so you don't have to make it if you don't want to, but hopefully it doesn't look too difficult if you did need to make it. So, um, okay, we will play around with how to apply this in the next video.